everybody's attention, please. We're going to go ahead and uh, go ahead and get started. Um, we do have uh, microphone capabilities here, but I'm just going to try to just use my voice. Uh, my wife tells me that I'm pretty loud, so if you could just kind of wave there in the back just to let me know that you can hear me just fine. Perfect. Thank you, Abby. Excellent. Uh, welcome to the uh, first annual uh, Alliance uh, Fall League Parent Informational Meeting. I just want to talk a little bit about uh, what the purpose and what the objective for this meeting uh, this evening is going to be. Basically, uh, for those of you that uh, this will be the first time that you will be participating with Alliance uh, in any of our programs, uh, we're just going to give you uh, just a real quick overview uh, of our organization, our club, uh, just a real quick uh, again overview of all of the programming uh, that we have uh, available that you might uh, take advantage of either this year or in the near to immediate future uh, that we offer through Alliance. And then obviously specifically uh, talk about uh, the Fall League. Um, I've compiled a list uh, at the end of a lot uh, of the frequently asked questions that have occurred um, that have come up last year uh, during the league and that uh, have already been brought to my uh, attention, folks emailing voicemails. Uh, so I'm going to try to cover a lot of those. Uh, and then at the end, uh, I'll just sort of open it up for some Q&A. And if there's any uh, general or uh, family specific questions that you guys have, uh, you can feel free to ask those and we'll have some time to uh, do that at the end. Uh, again, just a little bit of background on our, on our organization. Alliance, we're a community-based, nonprofit organization. Our goal is basically to bring as much high-quality volleyball to the Middle Tennessee community as we possibly can. Uh, you'll see uh, just a little bit uh, of an excerpt from our uh, mission statement there. Uh, basically, we want to give every child from the age of three up through the age of 18 that wants the opportunity to play volleyball, we want to have a program for them to be able to play the game. And whether that's you know at a recreational level, whether that's at a competitive level, we want to offer some type of program, again, whether you're six or whether you're 18, for you to be able to take advantage of the opportunity to play the game. Again, just sort of a breakdown of all the training programs that we offer. Again, you'll see from ages as young as three uh, all the way up through uh, the age of 18. Uh, on the left-hand side there, uh, you'll see specifically uh, the list of our programs. Again, our mini TOTS program starting uh, from age three uh, and then going all the way up through uh, our fall and winter league, uh, which serves grades three through eight. Uh, I'm sure many of you are also familiar uh, with our club or travel teams. Uh, which this year will serve ages 10 through 18. Uh, and if that's something that uh, you might be interested in, in addition to uh, participating in our fall league, we'd certainly be happy to answer uh, some of your questions on that as well. Your fall league supervisor, that is me. My name is Peter Leiner. This will be my fourth year uh, coaching, working uh, with Alliance. I moved down here in October of 2010. Uh, my wife was uh, getting her master's degree in special education at Vanderbilt. Uh, we were getting married in November. I was living in New Jersey at the time. And uh, so pretty much one day I packed up my car with all my earthly possessions and drove down to Nashville. And four years later, um, I just, <laughs> I just in love with this community, uh, got plugged in with Alliance. Um, and just really, really am enjoying, again, just being here in Nashville, in Middle Tennessee, uh, and trying to bring some of my uh, experiences in high school and college uh, and in my postgraduate uh, work to, um, again, to, to the club. Uh, and just, again, I'm here to help you in any way that I possibly, possibly can. I will be assisted this year uh, by two of our coaches on the left. Uh, ben O'Day. Uh, ben is uh, going to be coaching with us this year uh, for the first year. Just moved out here uh, from St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, Coach Abby Masters, who is there in the back, 
Uh, moved out here last summer uh, from the great state of California. And so uh, basically you have a Northeaster, a Midwesterner, and a West Coast, uh, a West Coast uh, influence uh, to this, uh, to this fall game. Uh, just a real quick overview. Uh, again, this will is basically just sort of uh, a reiteration of the information uh, that appeared on the informational flyer that we had posted on our website. Um, if you, for whatever reason, haven't gotten a chance to download that or print it out or had a chance to view that yet, uh, you can pick that up. We have several copies there uh, on the back table. We have some over there on the side uh, as well. Uh, I don't want to get too much into detail on this, but again, seven week program, uh, one 90 minute practice a week on either a Tuesday or a Thursday evening. Uh, again, three different uh, practice times there that you'll be able to, uh, you'll be able to uh, sort of choose from. Again, you'll see the Tuesday practice dates, the Thursday practice dates, and then uh, obviously our, our game days being on Saturdays. Uh, you'll see the dates there for those as well. Just a little bit of a breakdown uh, on our three different divisions of play uh, that we offer in this league. Uh, again, you'll see a very quick overview on that informational flyer, uh, but just getting into a little bit more detail. Uh, the three different balls uh, that will be used um, in our developmental division, that will be uh, our youth U12 ball, which you'll see all the way there uh, on your left. Many of you uh, know this as the volley light ball. Uh, and for our intermediate division uh, gameplay, we'll be using the Molten L2 ball. And then for our advanced division of play, we will be using uh, the Molten Soft Touch. Uh, if you'd like to come up at the end and just sort of, you know, kind of get a feel for what, uh, you know, how the different balls feel, uh, you're certainly welcome to do that. Basically, the difference, uh, the, the main difference uh, is the Soft Touch ball is going to have more of a leather, uh, a leather uh, cover to it. Um, whereas the L2 and the volley light ball are going to be a little bit softer. Uh, so if you have uh, a third or a fourth grader, uh, she won't hopefully be discouraged after her first practice because she's coming home and you know her forearms are all red from you know having to uh, pass the uh, pass the soft touch ball. Uh, again, you'll just also see there a little bit about the different uh, serving rules. I would say for those of you uh, that are going to be looking to sort of distinguish between whether or not your child is a, uh, you know, maybe an intermediate player versus an advanced player, again, I would just probably direct your attention to those different serving rules. Uh, that is probably the, uh, I guess, primary catalyst, if you will, uh, for, um, you know, for the level of success that your child will be able to have in the league. Um, really kind of all starts with uh, serving. So uh, again, basically uh, the developmental uh, division, uh, you're allowed to serve in gameplay the first three uh, balls from behind uh, the 10-foot line on the volleyball court, which is essentially 10 feet from the net. Uh, at the intermediate division, uh, first three you can serve from the 20-foot line, which is again about 20 feet from the net. Uh, and then in the advanced division, all servers will serve at all times from the regular volleyball end line, which is 30 feet away from the net. Again, just some of the frequently asked questions uh, that uh, we've received a lot uh, already this year and during the season last year. First one being, can I request a practice time? The answer to that question is yes. Uh, you'll see uh, on the registration page when you get there, and we will conclude uh, the presentation tonight. I'll just go through basically what the registration is going to look like. So when you actually get to that page, uh, you know, you'll at least be familiar with what it is that you're looking at. So you'll see right here, um, I'm not quite sure why the font sizes came up a little bit bigger, but uh, you'll see that you'll get to select your first choice uh, of practice time. Uh, so in that box, you'll either put 4.30, 6 o'clock, or 7.30. And then you'll get up to your second choice for practice time, and you'll do the same thing. Whatever your second choice would be, 4.30, 6 o'clock, or 7.30. Basically, how we assign practice times is the earlier on in the process that you're able to register, uh, the higher likelihood you have 
uh, of being able to get your uh, first choice of practice time. Uh, the later on uh, that you wait to uh, register, um, again, you still might get your first choice, uh, but basically at the end of last year, we were able to get, I think like about 95% of all of the 550 players that we had participating in the league last year, I think we had about 95% either got their first choice of practice time or their second choice of practice time. So we are very thoughtful about work commitments and other sports and activities um, that you guys are involved in. And so we do try to make every effort that we can to accommodate your schedule. Uh, can I request a practice day? Uh, the answer to this question is uh, yes. However, we do ask you to be uh, as flexible as you possibly can in requesting your practice day. Uh, reason being is because, again, last year we had 550 uh, participants in the fall league. Uh, and so, again, we're pretty good about being able to uh, accommodate a request for time. Um, but if everybody, you know, kind of goes through and says, hey, you know, I really prefer, you know, Tuesday or Thursday, and I really prefer this time, again, it just it does become a pretty, uh, you know, a, a pretty time-consuming process for our staff to have to kind of sort through all that. Um, now, obviously, you know, if you have, get a work situation or something that you absolutely uh, have to practice on Tuesday or Thursday, Again, we're, you know, nine times out of ten, we're able to accommodate all of those, uh, all those requests, but we do just ask you to be thoughtful uh, of just the sheer number of folks that we do have participating with us. Can I request to play on the same team as a friend or sibling? Answer that question also, yes. You will see, again, when you get to the registration page, there's a, there's a section there for notes and comments. And that is the section where you would just say, you know, I'm requesting, you know, for my daughter to play with, you know, so and so. They go to school together, or they're friends, or you know, I'd like her to play with her older sister. You know, like them to be on the same team. Uh, and again, we're we're usually pretty good about being able to accommodate those <coughs> accommodate those requests. How we assign teams. We do have some teams that will uh, choose to sign up um, with essentially a pre-selected team. So either friends from school or they play on the middle school team together or they played on uh, a club team together last year. And basically, uh, you know, it's generally uh, one of their parents will choose to sort of head up that process. Uh, and I'll get an email saying, hey, you know, we're going to be signing up as a team together. Uh, these are the names of the girls that are going to be signing up on the team. Could you please make sure uh, that they're placed on a team together? Again, no problem. Uh, we're certainly able to uh, certainly able to accommodate those requests. Uh, we do ask for those of you uh, that may be considering that we do try to have uh, ten players on each team across all three divisions. Uh, again, just so we can get uh, as many folks involved and in being able to participate as possible. <coughs> Uh, for those of you that participated with us last year, uh, you know, there was that dreaded uh, waiting list uh, that did had to pop up just because, again, we just uh, generated so much interest that we, uh, you know, just honestly weren't really ready for, weren't really expecting. Uh, we've tried to plan a little bit better uh, this year as far as additional uh, nets for practice uh, and also an additional uh, time, additional 90 minute practice slot on both Tuesdays and Thursdays. If you uh, are just going to be signing up as an individual, so you know there's not, uh, you know, eight or nine girls, either you know friends or uh, school teammates or club teammates. Again, perfectly fine. How we'll uh, basically assign teams uh, is uh, the first factor that we'll look at is obviously your practice time. Again, we want to make sure that. You know, if you, you know, can't make it to practice until, you know, 7.30, we want to make sure that we can get you that 7.30 practice time. Uh, second thing we look at is uh, age. Uh, as much as possible, we try to keep uh, girls of similar age together. Um, so, you know, as much as possible, you know, we probably not rather have, uh, you know, a seventh grader participating with a third grader on the same team if they would happen to be in the same uh, division. Uh, and the last thing that we will also take into account uh, is school. 
Um, you know, again, you sign up for the developmental division and you're a fourth grader at Clovercroft, and you know, if we see, hey, somebody else that's a fourth grader at Clovercroft signed up, um, you know, maybe you know they don't know each other, but we do try to again maybe create an opportunity there to get to know somebody else uh, from your school. Uh, is there an age restriction in any division of play? Answer to that question is no. Again, what I will say is typically, uh, you know, our developmental division uh, will be made up uh, primarily of our third, fourth, and fifth grade participants. Uh, our intermediate division, uh, again, depending fifth, sixth, seventh grade, and then our advanced division last year was primarily seventh and eighth graders. Uh, again, there are always uh, exceptions to that. Uh, last year, um, Abby actually coached uh, a developmental level team uh, that was, I think, entirely eighth graders and one seventh grader. Um, but you know, again, something that we are, you know, thoughtful of uh, that if your daughter's in, you know, seventh or eighth grade and just trying volleyball out for the first time, again, that's certainly, you know, that's great, and we want to make as positive, positive experience for your daughter as we possibly can, uh, and we'll try to do that by making sure that she's put on a team uh, with other girls. Um, near her age. Do I know when my child's team will play on Saturday? Again, another frequent question. Um, you know, a lot of stuff going on on Saturday. Um, you know, those of you that have, uh, you know, that have siblings, you know, playing different sports, you know, tough to, you know, try to plan to get from point A to point B. Uh, last year uh, and this year, we'll try to hold pretty true again to a general uh, a general rule of timing, uh, where the uh, developmental uh, division, if you're, uh, if you're a team in that division, you'll play your games, your matches sometime between 8.30 and 10.30 in the morning. If you're in the intermediate level division, you'll most likely play your games between 10.30 and 12.30. And if you're in the advanced level division, uh, somewhere between 12.30 and 2.30. Again, that's just a general rule. We try to hold uh, as close to that as we possibly can for the duration of the league for all seven weeks, just because again, we know that you guys are trying to plan, you know, um, you know, trying to get everybody where everybody needs to be. So we do try to, again, hold pretty true to that. Um, each team on Saturday will play three 30 minute long matches, and then there will be a break of 10 minutes in between each match. Uh, we do keep score, um, and matches uh, basically will end at the conclusion of the 30 minutes, uh, regardless of the score. It's just kind of the only way to keep everybody on time and make sure that we get, you know, last year we had 53 teams that we had to get each, you know, team 90 minutes of gameplay on Saturday. Uh, and so we do try to, you know, 30 minutes, 10 minute break, and we do try to stay as much on time as we possibly can. How is playing time distributed? Uh, again, this is a recreational-based league, so we do uh, instruct our coaches to distribute playing time uh, as evenly as possible across all divisions. One of the things that makes volleyball a little bit tricky, maybe different from you know football or basketball, um, is that there are a couple different ways uh, that coaches can choose to um, essentially divide up playing time. Uh, you might have a coach that says, okay, you're going to play the first set and then, you know, you're going to sit the second set. Uh, you may have a coach that says, hey, you're going to play three front row rotations and then you're going to sub out and then next set you'll play three back row rotations. Or you might have a coach that says, hey, you're going to play X number of minutes. Um, ultimately, it may not work out exactly evenly that each player receives the exact equal amount uh, of playing time. But again, we do think that at the end of the season, we, it does tend to work out uh, pretty, pretty evenly, and our coaches are thoughtful of making sure that everybody's getting equal, equal playing time. Will all practices be held at A-game Sportsplex? Uh, the answer to that question is yes, with two exceptions uh, that we know of already. Um, and those two dates up there, uh, we will be having uh, practices on the November the 20th and games on November 22nd over at the Franklin Fieldhouse. Uh, for those of you that participated with us uh, last year or those of you that are familiar with the area, that's essentially the old USBA building. 
uh, over on General George Patton. Um, it's about a mile away from A game. Um, and, uh, you know, again, we'll be, you know, communicating and giving everybody enough time and just kind of reminding you that that'll be going on. Uh, but uh, other than that, uh, all practices and games will be held at A game this year. When do I find out who my child's coach will be? I uh, just want to note that the deadline to register this year is going to be October the 3rd. Uh, and that deadline essentially gives our staff uh, approximately uh, a week and a half to try to, you know, finalize rosters, make sure that everybody, you know, is placed where they're supposed to be, uh, gives us a chance to assign our coaches. Uh, so we will make it our goal this year that by October 7th, so that'll be a week before the first practice, uh, that you will get an email either from your coach or from me saying, this is who your coach will be. These will be the other uh, players that will be on the team with you. Um, and we will try to hold pretty true, uh, pretty true to that date. Again, last year, we had 53 teams and 43 coaches that we were all trying to make sure that, you know, you know, in addition to your guys' schedule, you know, we're trying to make sure that we accommodate our coaches' schedules as well. Uh, you know, we have some coaches that, you know, teach or have other jobs uh, that, you know, they can only be uh, at practice uh, during a certain time or a certain day. So when you kind of factor in, you know, kind of all that goes on, uh, it is sort of basically a big jigsaw puzzle. Uh, but again, we do, uh, we will try to make uh, our best effort this year that by October 7th, everybody that has signed up will know practice day, practice time, coach's name, and then the other members of your team as well. Does Alliance employ its older club players as coaches? Uh, we are very selective uh, in employing some of our uh, 17 and 18 uh, year old players uh, as coaches. Uh, that all starts with them emailing us and saying, hey, I have an interest in coaching. Uh, and for those of you that have uh, you know, 16, 17 year olds, uh, juniors and seniors in high school, uh, we obviously want to uh, encourage them and give them an opportunity to sort of get out and, you know, A, be able to work and be also able to kind of see things, you know, from a different, you know, perspective. So they see it mostly from the perspective of them as a player, but through uh, the fall league gives them an opportunity to kind of see things through the eyes of a coach as well. Can my child participate in the fall league and play on a travel team? The answer to that question is yes. Uh, for those of you that are not aware, uh, most of our um, most of our younger uh, most of our younger travel teams will be trying out in mid October, around the same time as the fall league starts. Uh, however, most of those uh, most of our travel teams will not start practicing until January. So if that is something that you're interested in, uh, that is a situation where you can definitely do both. Uh, big question we got uh, last year is, what does my $195 fee include? Uh, and again, you'll just kind of see uh, an itemized list there uh, of what that fee does include. Uh, basically, the only thing that you will be uh, responsible for uh, is basically just athletic apparel. Uh, you know, shorts uh, or spandex, uh, athletic shoes. Uh, if you have volleyball shoes, great. Um, but really, you know, basketball shoe uh, will do just fine as well. Uh, if you could send your child to uh, practice uh, in games with a water bottle, that would probably be uh, that would probably be helpful. Uh, and then transportation. Um, again, if you could just try to make sure that, uh, you know, whether it's you or whether it's a family member, whether you're carpooling, uh, it just, again, it's going to help us. It's going to help our coaches. Uh, if you can just make sure that uh, you're there for practice on time uh, and you're there to pick up uh, your child on time for the practice uh, as well. Uh, for those of you that might be interested, uh, Coach Abby, we did bring in uh, several uh, boxes back there uh, of our spandex and knee pads. So if that's something that you were looking uh, to invest in before the start of the season, uh, that option will be available to you there in the back at the end. Okay, does anybody have any questions before we go through sort of just a, um, again, what the, what the registration page is gonna, is gonna look like? Any questions? 
Okay. So again, just uh, an example here. Um, this is going to take us to the page, I hope, uh, for the advanced division. Okay. So when you click on the link to register, again, you'll just kind of see a recap uh, of the description of the division that you're going to be registering for. Uh, you will select uh, the only box uh, that's available for you to select, which is I'm an individual registering. And you'll select that. <coughs> and that'll move you to, uh, again, sort of the meat of the registration page. And again, a pretty, pretty straightforward process. Uh, you know, just uh, your child's first name, last name, a home phone, cell phone, contact info, uh, date of birth, all that good stuff. Uh, again, down here is where you will uh, fill out that first and second choice uh, for your preferred practice time. Uh, if you have a secondary email address that you would like us to include in all of our uh, correspondence, you can feel free uh, to put that in there as well. Uh, and again, uh, that notes and comments section uh, will be good for, hey, I really needed Thursday practice because, you know, whatever the situation might be, uh, my daughter is looking to play with you know, her older sister, could you please put them on the same team? Uh, my daughter's looking to play with a friend that goes to, you know, they go to school together. Could you please make sure that they're put on the same team? No problem. Basically, what will happen is once you fill in all this information uh, and you submit it, I will get an email uh, directly to my inbox, uh, which basically is going to um, give me all the information uh, that you provided. Um, and then I have a master uh, Excel spreadsheet that I use to keep track of everyone that has registered, their requested practice times, coaches, etc. Uh, and the final thing there is um, where you will submit your uh, payment information. Uh, again, pretty straightforward uh, for those of you that have done any kind of online shopping. Uh, you throw your credit card number, expiration date, all that stuff. Um, and then uh, the last thing that you will do is you will kind of go down here to the bottom. We have an online uh, registration agreement that you can electronically sign uh, just by clicking on the I agree accept. And then you will go to where it says submit registration. You'll get a page that will say congratulations. You've registered for Alliance Volleyball Club's Fall League. Uh, and that's pretty much, that's pretty much that. Um, Again, if for whatever reason uh, you get stuck in the process, oh, one thing that I did want to mention, for whatever reason, sometimes our Easy Facility, uh, which is uh, our online management service that we use to handle all these registrations, uh, sometimes does not like Internet Explorer for whatever reason. Um, I know we've had some issues in the past with folks that have had Internet Explorer. Um, I would say that if you have uh, Chrome or Firefox as an alternative web browser uh, that you may want to go ahead and try to use that. Um, but uh, again, you might use Internet Explorer, you might not have any problems. Uh, just uh, reporting on what was uh, an issue that uh, we had about, I guess, half a dozen people present to us last year. And the common theme was that they were all using Internet Explorer to try to, uh, to, try to uh, register. Um, where you will go to find uh, registration is you will go to our website and then uh, I will speak to uh, our club administrator tomorrow morning and decide exactly where we're gonna uh, where we're gonna get those registration links placed uh, but they will be in one of two uh, one of two places they, they will either be uh, somewhere up here in sort of our, um, you know, I guess what we would call the, the, the main portion uh, of the website, you'll see an information, uh, a little blurb there that'll say click here to register for the fall league, uh, or we may, uh, for convenience sake, we may just go back down here uh, to where uh, you found that fall league flyer, fall league 2014, uh, you can click on that and uh, we may put the registration links there as well. But again, it'll be one of those two places to call and I'll be happy to answer your questions uh, as best as I possibly can. Uh, 
Uh, just the last thing that I would uh, close with, um, one of the things that helps, uh, that helps make the league successful, at least from an administrative uh, standpoint, um, and last year with, again, 550 participants, uh, is communication. Uh, I will probably uh, be that person that is sending you uh, a ton of email, uh, and for most of you, it'll probably be uh, more emails than you would uh, probably care to have uh, coming into your inbox on a daily or weekly basis. Uh, but again, I would rather you have you know a couple emails that, hey, I already know that, I can go ahead and delete it, as opposed to, you know, hey, I didn't get an email that I really needed some information on, and you know now you're upset with me, and I don't blame you. So uh, I will be, you know, emailing frequently, um, and so you know if everyone can just be uh, diligent about checking their email, uh, again, that's just going to help uh, make this uh, the best experience uh, that it can possibly be. Again, from an administrative uh, administrative standpoint. Okay, well that is all that I have. Um, if there are any other questions, if, if there, oh, yes ma'am in the back. Um, can you talk um, a little bit about what the expectations are? I know you're going to have a separate session about your club, but just briefly talk about what the expectations are of that. And then my second question is the summer, that's right, the Sunday sessions that you're offering now. Sure. That is, that is an excellent question. So the question was about expectations uh, for uh, the club season and for our club teams and also about our Sunday skills uh, clinics. I will actually invite our uh, club director, if he would like to uh, stand up and perhaps say a few words. Our club director, Jeff Wismer. Um, Jeff, if you just want to talk a little bit. Please, please do, please do. Um, yeah, I'll just, I'll just talk about the league. If you are unfamiliar with the league, it's a league that last year Peter took over for the first time. Alliance had not run it in the past. So I'm excited about the direction Peter took the league last year um, with just improving the level of coaching, the instructional opportunities that he gave into the league, but it grew the scope. I mean, it's pretty unfathomable for me that he's directing 550 kids over seven weeks. I mean, I have this image of Peter's house, and he's probably like a bad detective that has all these strings and cords and doesn't sleep at night, and he'll send you an email at three in the morning. That's Peter. He's pretty invested in what's going on in the league, and now have Abby and Ben working hand-to-hand, -hand, and you'll get to know the two of them a little bit in the league as well. And Again, just to kind of talk about the league, this year, I think the league transforms even further in that we have more Alliance coaches who are wanting to invest in the league, who are wanting to serve our kids, who just want to learn the game. And the league is unique in that um, I, I, I'm not, if you hear me talk, I'm not from the area. This area is very different in that middle school is a very short seven week or eight week season. And there isn't volleyball in elementary schools. That's atypical. Other parts of the country, I mean, it's a full 18-week season in middle school. Elementary schools truly have a rec program involved in it. So the league serves a very broad range of kids and abilities. So for some of our athletes, this is um, kind of the curtain call for their middle school team. They know they have eight weeks of middle school, and then that group already is saying, gosh, we can't wait to jump into Fall League because we actually get more training in Fall League. We actually get more play in Fall League than we do in middle school. And then we have kids who, as Peter mentioned, who didn't play eighth grade, and they just jumped on a team with, with Abby Masters, and they just want to play volleyball. So the scope of the league is very broad, and for us to be able to have more Lions coaches involved this year, more so than in the past, um, I think that's an encouragement to where the league is going, and, and I'm back in the league a little bit more now knowing that I have someone like Peter who has a heart for the league and wants to grow the league and take care of you as customers and do his best to serve you all as we go forward. Just, to, just briefly to touch upon, we are so fortunate to have a facility like A-Game to play at. And you'll know it when you walk in and 
the air conditioning's going, and your daughters are playing on hardwood, and we have balls, and we have good nets. It's a very, very unique distinction to our league that we're really happy about. Yeah, we pay for it, but at the end of the day, we're glad we're there. And you'll realize in about five years, the value to your daughters jumping and playing on a good surface. Playing on hardwood that's been built for athletes to play on is an amazing incentive that you may not be able to quantify now, but you will down the road. I just spoke to one of my college players who's at Alabama and Kat said to me, Jeff, my body's in better shape because of the floor I played on than a kid who's my roommate or she's down the hall who played on this fake sport court surface for years and she's dealing with shin splints, shin splints and her body's broken down and she's just starting the pinnacle of her career in college. So again, just want to talk a little bit about some of the small things I think is unique to the league. Moving into your question, uh, Sunday skills is really something that we've built over the years just to give our kids an opportunity to have a specific theme and a specific coach who addresses that theme. So for example, we might do a passing clinic for ages 12 to 18. So if your daughter just wants to get a little bit better in passing, we have high school kids who jump out into that clinic because they got aced five times you know, earlier in the week and they just want to get some more touches. We have kids who come out because they don't know what passing is. So again, the audience scope is pretty broad and we try to micromanage the different levels the best we can within that theme. So yes, this could serve your daughters as they get ready for the fall, like if they wanna jump out. Uh, I think each clinic's gonna cost $25 for, for an hour. We try to keep our instructional ratio somewhere in the range of eight kids to every coach, but we really never know how many people are gonna show up. Uh, I'm not one to turn someone away if they wanna learn the game. I'm not also one that's gonna charge you double if you walk up and want to register as well. So we try to do our best to make sure the quality of instruction is positive. So for the fall leaguers, I think it really is what are you looking for? If you want your daughter to feel a little bit more comfortable before they jump in the league, then maybe the Sunday skills is the way to go, but it's in no way a, a mandate to get ready for the league. And what was the other question that you had had? Yeah, and I would say the Fall League itself is, the base of the Fall League is just really to continue to cultivate the heart of the game and the enjoyment of the game and the exploration of how much involved in this do I want to have. You know, for some kids in our Fall League, this is the first time they've ever been involved in a team sport. And so Peter and I really try to echo with our coaches, we are teaching our parents how to be a supportive parent and understand team sport. We are also trying to do our best to teach your daughters what that's like as well. Within a recreational model, um, club is a, is a different world. And, and we have a couple different tiers of club, uh, a bunch of different levels that will spell out what the expectations are of those levels as well. So I don't know that there's really a comparative between Fall League and club. Fall League isn't, definitely is not a precursor to club. We don't run around, and some folks may think so, I don't run around the gym going, oh, I want that kid and I want that kid. Honestly, I don't want to be in the gym on Saturdays because I'm married and my wife actually wants me to stay at home on a few Saturdays because once November hits, we basically wave at each other because we just don't spend a lot of time until June again. So um, there's no real direct connection. Did I answer your question? To, I think I'm probably the best of my ability at this point. And we'll have a club meeting which will kind of spell out the parameters of our club, the mission of our club, what's going on new with our club. And I think the date for that is September the 14th. Don't quote me on that. That will be up on our website as well. But it'll be a Sunday upcoming here in September. The Sunday skills, how would we know about that? I think it currently is on the website now as well. Okay. Yeah. And what we do, just to piggyback, and I'll give the floor back to Peter, is we try to be very upfront with who's going to be in our gym. Because some of our coaches, for example, our assistant director, Ann Mullins, she was a Libra at University of Tennessee. She's the all time digs uh, leader at Lipscomb University. So if your daughter wants to learn a little bit about defense, probably a pretty good person to come and train with. 
But if you have Abby who set in college and has set tra his trained setters at the USA highest levels in volleyball, you might want to get out on Sundays to work with Abby. My point is we'll promote who's actually running the league or running the Sunday sessions the week of that Sunday clinic session. So you can jump online and know who's going to lead. And then every leader has at least two or three support coaches that will be there and we build a curriculum for it. The curriculum, we try to do our best to build a curriculum independently each week, but it builds a little bit as we go as well. Anything else related to the club that I can answer before I can give the floor back to Peter? Yes, ma'am. These skill development clinics, do you register online for those just like you do the ball week? Yes, ma'am. One at a time? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. You can jump on our website and the registration items I think are already, Peter can probably speak to it, are already open as as well. Abby, anything I need to add? Yeah. Anyone else related to the club before I give Peter an opportunity again to, to talk about Fall League? All right, again, thank you so much for your support, Peter. You got it. Yeah, I'll just add, um, since several questions about Sunday skills, uh, since I have it open, I'll just kind of touch on a little bit uh, about what that, will, uh, what that will look like. And I didn't want to do that, so sorry. Um, basically, uh, <laughs> we have a few different online registration systems that we use, and we try not to make it too confusing. There's reasons for all of that. Um, but basically, what you will do um, if you are interested in registering for our Sunday skills, first of all, if you're interested in just some more info, oh, it's going back. If you're interested in some more information about our Sunday skills program, again, yeah, you can click. Uh, right there on that link on our website. That'll post, bring up a similar flyer uh, to what we have for the Fall League as well. Uh, what you will need to do if you are interested in registering uh, for any of those Sunday Skills Clinics is at the top right corner of our page, you'll see a link to register. And uh, again, one of the other um, online systems that we use uh, for our programming is called Blue Sombrero. Uh, and again, if that's not something that you're familiar with, basically Blue Sombrero, the nice thing about that is, is that it gives you an opportunity to create a username and a password, just like you would if you were you know, shopping at, I don't know, online at Macy's or something, username and a password. Um, and then, uh, you know, again, you enter all your information there like you would uh, if you were registering for the Fall League as well. Um, and just uh, basically you'll get to the end of this registration process and then based on your child's birth date, um, it will give you all the list of available Sunday skills clinics uh, that you would be able to, uh, you'd be able to register for. Um, yes, ma'am? So if we already have a Blue Sombrero account, we're ready to register for the league, and we're going to be registered with Blue Sombrero, or will we guys go? Sure, yes, good, good, good question. So if you have, if you have already have a, uh, the question was, sorry, Daryl, the question was, if you already have a Blue Sombrero account, will you already be able to register for the league? Was that sort of the question? Yes. Okay, so um, again, we, we try not to make it confusing. Um, the Blue Sombrero online registration system does not have anything to do uh, with Fall League. Um, again, for Fall League, uh, again, you'll revisit, uh, you'll revisit the front uh, the home page of the website, um, and again, you'll either see it, uh, you'll either see it somewhere here, one of these kind of scrolling pictures. You'll see something that says "Register for Fall League," uh, and um, or again, we may just include it back down here uh, where you got your Fall League informational flyer from. Basically, the Fall League is just a link. You don't need a username. You don't need a password. You just need the link. That takes you directly to the registration page, as I showed you before. Um, there will be a link uh, for the advanced division, a link for the intermediate division, uh, and a, a link for the developmental division uh, as well. Um, one of the other questions, I'm sorry, that I just want to address quickly that somebody had asked me uh, beforehand um, is, uh, you know, the possibility of, you know, if I sign up for, you know, let's say I sign up for the advanced division and I realize that, you know, a couple weeks in, hey, I don't know if, you know, this was maybe uh, the greatest decision, you know, is it possible for me to move? Uh, the answer to that is absolutely yes. Uh, I will say that, again, last year uh, with 550 kids participating, I think we only 
had to move two kids. Um, you know, they had signed up for a division, and I think it was that they had both signed up for the advanced division, and after the first couple weeks, they realized that, you know, hey, I don't know if this is really the best, you know, situation for me as far as my development, uh, and we were able to, you know, we were able to, to, to move them uh, to a different, uh, a different division. Um, the other thing that I did want to uh, address as I'm now starting to think about some of the questions that came up last year that I didn't think to have in the presentation is if you are um, going to be uh, requesting to play on the same team uh, again as a sibling or particularly uh, as a friend um, if you guys could just make sure that you are both registering for the same division um, and also requesting the same uh, practice times. I know that last year we had uh, about three or four uh, scenarios where you know somebody would register and say, "Hey, I'm requesting to play with my friend from school, so and so," and then I received the friend's registration, and she had signed up for a different division. And so you know, then I kind of have to go back and try to, and you know, sometimes that creates some uncomfortable uh, situations for me as I try to um, even all that out. So I do just ask that it, that is something uh, that you're going to be interested in doing is having, uh, you know, wanting your 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 daughter to play with uh, a friend or a school teammate. If you could just make sure uh, that you guys are, you know, just kind of communicating as far as, hey, this is you know the time that we would like to you know practice, and this is the division that we're going to be. Uh, registering for. Yes, ma'am. Will the t-shirts be ready for that first Saturday? Excellent. Or a few weeks? Excellent question. Excellent question. So the question was, um, will the t-shirts be ready for the first Saturday, uh, or uh, will it take a couple weeks? If you participated with us last year, um, I don't think we had the t-shirts in until about the third week, uh, and that basically grew out of um, a lot of folks emailing us. Uh, from two years ago saying that hey you know it really would have been nice if you gave you know the kids an opportunity to choose their own t-shirt color um, and that was you know something that came up a lot which you know we totally understand uh, so that's what we did last year is when uh, your child's team had their first practice they basically got together and they said hey we want you know neon yellow shirts uh, and then you know that first week after that first week of practice uh, we placed uh, the order with our screen printer for the correct number uh, of shirts uh, and then those were printed uh, with our logo and then by the time we were able to get all that turned around uh, they were um, you know I think it was the third Saturday before uh, they were uh, they were ready um, don't know exactly what that's going to be like this year uh, supposedly there's a possibility that we may uh, be introducing a new logo I don't know if that's going to be the case or not um, but if that is not the case, uh, you know, again, your, you know, your child will get together uh, with her teammates on her first practice day, either Tuesday or Thursday, and they'll decide, hey, we want, you know, we want to be, you know, we want to have purple t-shirts. Uh, so that first Saturday uh, would just be uh, your child just wearing any purple t-shirt that they might have uh, in their closet. Um, we don't really get too specific, like there's no need for a number, you know, there's nobody that's, you know, scoring, keeping a book or anything, and, you know, so for those of us that, you know, have, you know, kids that play club and may have done a, a score book before, uh, you know, that can get a little bit crazy. Uh, really, none of that, it's pretty laid back as far as, you know, as far as numbers and, and you know, so, yeah, does that sort of answer your, your question, I hope? Perfect. Yes, ma'am. Is there a parent volunteer hours of expectation? I'm sorry, say that again. Parents, do parents have to volunteer to do oh. certain jobs? Yes, ma'am. Gotcha. Good. So the question was, um, question was, uh, parent uh, volunteer expectations. Do parents have to volunteer uh, time? Uh, pretty much no. Uh, the <coughs> only thing that we will ask for on Saturday uh, is a couple of parent volunteers uh, to help uh, flip a uh, flip a flip a score chart. Um, again, we're not asking you to keep a book or anything like that, uh, you know, basically just, you know, because again, we do try to keep score and at the end of, uh, at the end of the seven weeks, we will have uh, a tournament style play and we will, you know, declare uh, a winner from each of the, uh, each of the three divisions. Um, and so we will ask for uh, parent volunteers to uh, do that. Um, but really beyond that, 
I mean, anything that you guys want to do as parents with your team is completely up to you. I mean, if you guys want to do, you know, if you guys want to have a team party, that's, you know, we pretty much try to stay out of that, and you guys are free to do pretty much whatever you whatever you would like. But um, does that answer your, answer your question? Anybody else? Okay, well, I uh, appreciate everybody uh, coming out on a Sunday evening. Uh, if you have any other additional questions, I'll be sticking around here for uh, a couple minutes uh, to try to get all of my stuff wrapped up. And